we like to see train wrecks as a human species. It's like, think about it. Think about it. It's Liam Mouse Vlog, Liam Mouse Vlog, it's Liam Mouse's Vlog. Hey y'all, it's pajama talk time again. I am in fact in my pajamas, Slytherin pajamas to be exact. They're so warm and cozy and comfortable and it is quite chilly here. Oh my goodness. I've got my wonderful Miracle Forest new video, Autumn something or other playing there. <laughs> and I've got a Woodwick candle burning. Um, I have my candle down here, Raise the Dead, which by the way, it still smells amazing after, what, a year? I've had this thing for a year and it still smells awesome. But anyway, I wanted the crackly sound. So I pulled out the uh, the ye old faithful woodwick candle. And of course, I've got some boo-brew to get us through. Boo-brew will get us through. And yes, yes, this is also the name of one of my new Halloween candles. No, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and no, mine doesn't smell like coffee. It is a whole different concoction of cool stuff. But anyway... Uh, I'm sorry that this is on my phone. My camera is all the way two floors above me and I did not feel like getting up and running upstairs to go get it. Plus, I'm pretty sure my battery is shot from my hair dyeing video because I forgot to charge it. <laughs> yeah, my new hair. My stupid pink at the top hair. <laughs> so I apologize for the poor quality and having to hand hold my phone. That irritates me, but there is literally nowhere to sit it, so... Uh, today's pajama talk is brought to you by the fact that I'm feeling lonely and blue. And what do I do when I feel lonely and blue? What do I do when I feel lonely and blue? I talk to you. I talk to you. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just having one of those nights where I'm just feeling lonely and blue. And, you know, usually it makes me feel better to talk to you guys oh my god hair do you ever just like get like that sometimes where you just kind of feel cruddy but there's no real reason for it you know like there's nothing to dwell on you know in my opinion those are actually like the worst times to feel blue you know like because there is no reason and well hello that's exactly what depression is but i'm not depressed this isn't a depression episode it's just like one of my little it's just like a little slump, you know, frumpy slump thing. But that's, you know, it's annoying when there isn't anything wrong. And, you know, there's nothing to dwell on. It's like there isn't anything specific that is bothering me or to make me feel blue. Like everything in my life is fine. Happy even. Yet I feel blue for no reason. And like that's worse because if there was actually something to focus on, I could sit here and like think about it or think of ways to solve it or make it better or feel better about like, oh, I can change this and I'll feel good about it. And like this is a toxic thing that needs to go. So we're going to work on that. Like I could actually like feel like I'm making progress. But when there's absolutely nothing wrong and you feel blue for absolutely no reason, what do you do with that? <laughs> Like, what, what do you do, right? You, what do you do with that? I don't know. I've been trying to distract myself all night with, like, um, watching uh, the various television shows or series that make me feel better. Didn't really work. Lost interest pretty quickly. Got distracted by playing games on my phone, which didn't help either. Uh, I've been trying to read some. I brought down some books. I am currently reading this one. It's super cute. Oh, my gosh. I missed the first one, but I'm going to have to go back and find it. Lord and Lady Bunny, almost royalty. It's it's so cute. I like it. But apparently it's a sequel and I missed the first one. So I'm going to have to find that one at some point. I also have my Vincent Price biography by his daughter, Victoria Price. Fun fact, Vincent Price's uh, grandfather invented baking powder. Who knew? Yeah, and that's not really working either. So, you know, and then of course I got the Scraps, who is emerging right now from his little cocoon and re-emerges. He does that. He pops out every once in a while just to say hello to the world and then burrows back underneath. So I decided I would sit and talk with you guys in my pajamas. Hence, pajama talk. Ah, I love these pajamas. They're so comfy. Comfy? They're comfy.
I really like that it's getting cooler here now. Like, it feels very fall-like now. Like, only at night, though. It's still, like, in the 80s during the day, if I'm not mistaken. But that's when I'm sleeping, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have to turn the air conditioning on during the day, and I almost have to turn the heat on at night because it goes down to, like, 40. It's ridiculous. But it's really nice, though. It, like... I have the windows open and I make it just like briskly chill. I leave the windows open just long enough to like to the point where I just can't stand it anymore. And I'm like, Ooh, okay, it's getting chilly. I got to shut the window, you know, and it feels good. It's nice. I appreciate that aspect of fall weather. So I know I mistakenly in my hair dyeing video, the last one I said, oh, like, oh, it's fall. I know it's not technically fall by the calendar yet, but tis the season. Okay, whatever. I don't care. It, it, September can't be considered summer anymore as far as I'm concerned they need to roll it back like I know it's based on the solstice and all that shit but I just feel awkward saying any portion of September is still summer it just feels wrong it feels like blasphemy you know what I mean like no September should never be included in summer ever no it should like cut off at the end of August that should be the cutoff point between summer and fall like in my humble opinion I don't know and the same should be said for like November to December okay end of November is the end of fall beginning of December is beginning of winter that is my opinion but I'm not in charge of like the alignment of the planets and the moon <laughs> and all that stuff I know I know I'm in charge of a lot of things but that is not one of them <laughs> so in my mind it is fall especially since it gets this chilly at night here it's it's quite nice so I was watching some videos earlier um, on YouTube just to try to keep myself entertained to no avail. It was just terrible. Yeah, I have no I have no candles to make right now, which is bumming me out. Like, y'all need to order some candles just to give me something to do so that I feel good about myself again. I think that might be the, the reason for my slump is it's just like, I feel so unproductive. You know, there's nothing to do <laughs> right now. Ah, and I don't like it. So if I could make some Halloween candles, I think that would make me feel a lot better. So... What was I just going to say? Oh, I was watching some YouTube videos. I don't know if y'all have heard of Kay's cooking. <laughs> and if you haven't, my recommendation is to look up people reacting to Kay's cooking rather than just going to her channel directly. Because that's how I found her was reaction videos. I watch um, Cinnamon Toast Ken. Okay. I love Cinnamon Toast Ken. Um, Ken and Dane, like Cinnamon Toast Ken and Buff Pro, like they react to stuff. And then Ken also works with Felix, PewDiePie, and they react to stuff too. But like they watch Kay's cooking videos and they react to it. And it's so much fun. And I got to thinking like between that and like I was uh, watching some America's Got Talent earlier, uh, the current season, which by the way, Freckled Zelda freaks me out. I don't know why. <laughs> Like, no judgment, no judgment, but if you know who Freckled Zelda is from America's Got Talent, I don't know why, but she freaks me out. I know that's mean. I, I don't mean it to be mean. She's really talented, and she's a really great performer. She's got a wonderful voice, and the way she plays the ocarina is amazing, and her costumes are just fantastic and magnificent, and she deserves all the success that she can get from this, right? But I don't know. She freaks me out. <laughs> Certain people just freak me out. I don't know why. And I don't mean that to be mean. I'm not like judging her or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just saying for some reason she freaks me out. <laughs> anyway. So I was thinking about like Kay's cooking, right? And like America's Got, America's Got Talent and like the old days of American Idol. From back in my day, American Idol... I don't think is now what it used to be. I don't know. I haven't watched it in a while, but the way it started off, it always rubbed me the wrong way because it just seemed like a show that glamorized bullying and like making fun of people who weren't awesome, you know, and the human psychology behind that really plays into what I was thinking about tonight, you know, with the whole Kay's cooking thing and stuff like America's Got Talent, at least when they do have an audition that isn't awesome, that isn't great, like they, they still, they say it gently, you know, they're just kind of like, you know, it wasn't right for the show or, you know, you could use some work or I just, I didn't enjoy it or something like that. But like back in the days of American Idol, especially at the beginning, they just really had no problem really making fun of these people, like, like laughing at their performances, like outright laughing at how bad they were or how bad they found them. 
and like just saying really insulting things and like nothing encouraging, like, you know, they didn't cushion it in any way. And you know how I told, like how I've talked about before, especially in my last pajama talk, like I value honesty, I value directness, but I mean, there's a difference between being honest and direct and just plain mean, like, you know, there's the polite thing that I was talking about, the polite social um, fake niceties thing, right? Like I was talking about, I don't, I'm not an advocate for those. I'm an advocate for honesty and directness, but like there's a middle ground, like it blurs, you know, like you can be honest and forthright, but nicely, you know, like I don't want anybody to misunderstand that I'm just going to like bluntly just say something mean or rude or whatever because it's true and that makes it okay. Like, no, that's not what I meant. Like, but I also don't want to just like politely lie either. You know, there are ways to say things that are true and negative, but in a nice way that isn't like disparaging or, you know, hurtful or mean or whatever. So like, that's kind of where I'm coming from with this. I just was thinking about like, you know, people who aren't good at stuff like Kay on her cooking channel. She's awful. She's a terrible cook. The people who make the reaction videos, right? to her cooking, they have been accused of like bullying her, like because they make these reaction videos that, well, they're laughing at her and like pointing out the things that she's doing wrong and stuff, but they're not insulting her though. You know what I mean? Like they're just pointing out that she's doing it horribly wrong because she is doing it horribly wrong. And they're not like going directly to her and saying these things to her face, like insulting things like, oh my God, Kay, you're so stupid. Or how could you be so dumb? Or why do you even bother? Like, you know, they don't say things like that. They're just like, no, that's not how you do it. Like, that's not a meatball. Like, what even is that? You're doing it wrong. You know, and they're saying it in their own corner of the internet. They're not like going directly to her. So, I mean, there's a fine line between what you would consider bullying, I suppose, but I don't consider that bullying. It's, it may not be very nice, you know, but I wouldn't put it in the category of bullying. <laughs> but the one, one video that I watched, it was an Italian chef, like an actual legit Italian chef reacting to her stuff. And he, in a couple of his videos said like, why does she have so many views on her videos? Like my Nana makes amazing recipes and she has like very few views and like nobody watches her videos, but she makes them right. And they're actually like good tips and like good recipes to follow and stuff. And then Kay has like half a million views on this terrible, terrible cooking video. And he was genuinely like, why, why are so many people viewing this? This doesn't make sense to me, you know? And I was, I got to thinking about it and it's like the American Idol syndrome. We like to see train wrecks as a human species. It's like, think about it. Think about it. When you watch these talent shows, these talent competitions or any reality show, oh, my hand is starting to hurt. Excuse me. I got to switch. You know, it's nice to see good acts that are emotional and moving and really awesome. And, you know, you want to cheer for these people and uh, like the saxophone kid on America's Got Talent. Oh my God, he's amazing. I love him. Um, and nobody spoil it for me. I don't know if it's ended now from this year or whatever, but like I'm still watching through the, <laughs> the qualifiers and stuff. So nope, anybody spoil anything for me. But anyway, I like to see good performances as much as the next person, but isn't it kind of fun when you see a really bad act and you really want the judges to say something bad? Ooh, even I'm a victim of that, you know, not putting myself above everybody else here, but you know, like I am way against bullying. I'm way against negative stuff. I don't allow it in my group, on my channel, in my life, nothing. But even I, <laughs> even I get some little bit of satisfaction when I see someone being bad at something and someone else calls them out on it, like the reaction videos to Kay's cooking. And I don't know how that makes me feel inside. And I don't think that anybody is innocent of that. I think American Idol took it too far, though. Like, way too far. Like, they got the nation way too invested in seeing the bad, the bad singers and the judges just ripping them apart. And they would end up leaving crying or angry or, you know, violent even and just super dramatic and stuff. And I don't know why, as a human species, we thrive on drama and conflict 
even though we claim we don't like it, we claim to avoid it, but for some reason when it's there, it we just we 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 yeah, we want that. We want to observe it. We don't want it in our lives, but we want to observe it. And we get some kind of weird satisfaction out of observing it. And I don't understand. Like, tell me how you have never stayed up a couple hours past your bedtime because you found a random thread on Facebook of people fighting. People you didn't even know. And you read all these comments between these two people going back and forth and just yelling at each other on Facebook over nothing. Tell me you haven't done that. I've done it. <laughs> and I don't know why. I don't know why we're so drawn to crap like that. It doesn't make sense to me. And it makes me feel a little bit bad about myself and us as a species. You know what I mean? Even the best people on earth, which I don't know if there is the best people on earth, but you know, even people who are just very pure and have the best intentions and are really positive. I doubt even they're impervious to that because it's, there's something, there's something in our brains that is drawn to conflict for observation and think about it. TV shows too, like, like scripted TV shows, not reality shows like sitcoms and stuff. JJ and I talk about this every once in a while. Think about Frasier. Okay. Or house. Okay. 10 to one. Anybody watching this has seen either of those shows or both the characters that we like, that we enjoy watching the characters that are made up, it's scripted, you know, it's not real. The characters are so entertaining to watch because they're so conflict fueled. Like House, super annoying, super arrogant, super narcissist narcissistic. Oh, he's just so grating. I can't even stand to watch House because like, I get it. He's entertaining or something. And he's like the medical Sherlock Holmes. I understand Wilson Watson. I get it. But... And the same goes for like Frasier. He's so uptight and dramatic and like yells a lot and everything. And it's super funny to watch. You have the audience laughing to like all of his like major dramatic freakouts, you know, and we're laughing too. But think about it. If you were actually like interacting with that person, you would not like it. You would not think it was funny. You know, you wouldn't enjoy it. It would be really annoying and you would just not want that person in your life. But for some reason, it's entertaining to observe, you know? Because like JJ and I have talked about that all the time. We're just like, oh my God, if we had to spend five seconds around somebody like Frasier or House, we would just like want to kill them because like, they're so annoying. Like they're so annoying, but we love to watch them. It's so entertaining. Why? Why is conflict so entertaining for us? I don't get it. Does that go back to like the gladiator days, you know, when we would like throw people into the arenas and watch them beat each other and like kill each other? Like, what is that? What is this barbaric tendency to enjoy observing conflict. Even when we're really positive, happy people, for some reason, we're still entertained by conflict. And I think that's what makes it really hard for people to stay in a positive mindset or stay good people and not participate in stuff like that because there's like a little, you know, there's an inherent tug towards that for some reason. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's just my thought and nugget for the night, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, Kay's cooking. <laughs> God, this poor woman. I can't figure out if she's trolling or not. I really can't. Like, I've watched several of her videos now, and I can't, I can't figure out how somebody could be that terrible at cooking. Especially as, as frequently as she cooks, you'd think that you'd learn something along the way or figure something out or go, okay, this didn't really work last time. Let me do it this way, a different way this time. And maybe it'll work this time. Like, how could you just completely blatantly ignore all the laws of recipes and food? And how could you possibly be alive for as long as she is if she's making this actual food for this long? Like, I, I don't get it. I just feel, I don't know. But I don't know if she's of the proper mindset to like intentionally troll. You know what I mean? If you see her, seen her videos, you know what I mean? She seems like a sweet old lady and I don't feel like she would think, aha, I'm going to troll the internet and be bad at cooking on purpose just for views. Like, I just don't think she would do that. But how could anybody be that bad at cooking? <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to show JJ one of her videos once. We made it like three minutes in and he's like, okay, I've seen enough. Oh my God. Because <laughs> he's a really good cook. Ugh. Oh, I'm getting a headache. This is so stupid. I can't believe my hair turned out pink on top. That's so dumb. 
So I hope y'all are having a good day, night, whatever, and I'm sorry for the quality of this video. Um, I know I'm in the dungeonous basement with a boring background because the couch is behind me. I'm looking at the most fantastic background, but y'all can't see it. So that's what I've been looking at this whole time. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I know it's cruddy, it's on my phone or whatever, but you know, casual hangout time. I feel like this is what it would be like if we were actually sitting next to each other and just having a chat. Having a chat. Yeah, my head is starting to hurt from sitting like this because it's messing with my spine and my neck and it's making me all crooky because I'm old and my back sucks. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Um, yeah, if you want to check out the new Halloween candles, go to underworldconnection.com, please, and thank you. Order something so I have something to do. <laughs> well, that's all for tonight, I guess. So I will leave you with those thoughts. Contemplating humanity and our draw to conflict, even if we don't want to be drawn to it. It's weird. Hmm. As always, watch out for the sheep. Yes. <laughs> that was supposed to be a sheep. And vlog phrase of the day is puka puka num num. I don't know. I'm running out of ideas for vlog phrase of the day. So puka puka num num. Spell it however you want. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.